Hi, I'm Danica Fine. In this final module of our schema registry course, we'll cover schema compatibility, the different settings you have at your disposal, and how to make use of them. Producer and consumer clients have expectations regarding the structure of the object they're working with. Take the foo class, for example. It has four fields, a long, a double, and two strings. Imagine for a moment that the development team responsible for getting the data into Kafka feels that the UUID field isn't useful anymore. They decide to update the object structure and remove the UUID field. The changes are made, and the producer application begins sending the updated objects into Kafka. But on the consumer side of things, the consumer receives the updated objects expects the UUID field to be present, and in response to its non-existence, throws an exception, forcing the application to shut down. That's obviously no good. It's easy to see that the object structure has changed, causing the new schema to be incompatible with the previous schema. What we need in this situation is the means to verify compatibility between different schema versions prior to their being implemented in production, so that this type of exception can be prevented. Thankfully, Schema Registry does exactly this sort of compatibility verification. The available compatibility modes and associated checks establish guardrails that guide you to safely update schemas and allow you to keep your clients operational as they're updated. Schema Registry validates schema changes on a per-subject basis at the time they're registered based on the compatibility setting you choose. As we saw earlier in the course, subject name remains the same even when a schema evolves, so it's a consistent value to use for compatibility checks. Going back to our example, a simple check could have let us know ahead of time if the new version of the schema being used by the producer is compatible with the previous version being used by the consumer. The compatibility check wouldn't have passed due to the missing default value. So we would know to update the consumer to use the new schema prior to updating the producer. The three primary compatibility modes are backwards, which is the default setting, forward, and full. Note that it is also possible to set the compatibility mode to none, which results in no compatibility check being done when a new schema is registered. Regardless of which mode we decide to use, the associated check compares the schema being registered with its immediate predecessor. When version 3 is registered, schema registry will only verify that it is compatible with version 2. Compatibility with other previous versions is not verified by default. But there are also three transitive modes that are extensions of the three primary modes. These modes extend the compatibility requirement to all previous or future schema versions. The difference with transitive compatibility is that the latest version of a schema that's just been updated is verified to be compatible with all previous versions, not just the immediately previous one. Now, let's review how each of the three compatibility modes work. We won't discuss the transitive versions as they follow the exact same rules, they just go back to all previous schemas. With backwards compatibility, you can delete fields from a schema and add fields as long as they have a default value. When you do this, you should update your consumer clients first. In this example, you've evolved a schema by removing field A and adding new field that has a default value associated with it. By updating the consumer client first, if a producer using the old schema sends records to Kafka, the updated consumer client will continue to work just fine. It will ignore the deleted field A on the record and use the default value provided for new field. With forward compatibility, you can delete fields that have a default and add new fields. In this case, you'll want to update your producer clients first. In the event that you have a consumer you haven't updated yet, it will continue to operate since it will just use the default value for the field that was deleted and ignore the newly added field. And finally, with full compatibility, every field in the schema has a default value. So the order of updating clients doesn't matter. Regardless of the order, both old and new consumers will continue to work properly. All right, to drive this home, here's a table summarizing the compatibility matrix for schema registry. With backward compatibility, you can delete fields and add fields with default values, and you'll want to update the consumer clients first. With forward compatibility, you can delete fields with default values and add new fields. You'll want to update your producer clients first. With full compatibility, both deleted or added fields must have a default value. Since every change to the schema has a default, the order in which you update your clients doesn't matter. Now that we've covered the different compatibility levels, let's have a quick look at how you would set the level for a schema subject. It's important to note that you can set compatibility at the subject level, so it's possible to have schemas with different compatibility levels. First, here's how you can set compatibility level with the Confluent CLI. Note that we've left off the security configs for clarity. The second example uses the schema registry rest command. And this final example sets the schema compatibility using the Gradle plugin. Finally, you can check if the changes you've made to a schema are compatible with the subject and current compatibility setting. Again, here's an example doing this check using the Confluent CLI, as well as one using the schema registry REST API. And a final example showing you how to do the check using the schema registry Gradle plugin configuration. And with that, we've wrapped up the final schema registry course module. And you should now know the options that you have to validate your schemas and keep them compatible as they evolve over time. 
Join me in our final hands-on where you'll see how to evolve and validate schemas on your own.